Rockets are fun. They're powerful, high-tech, cultural icons of human achievement, and just plain cool to watch. But they're also incredibly expensive, mostly expendable, and therefore wasteful, and not very safe. Enter the solution. A 96,000 kilometer long elevator connecting Earth to space, able to ferry cargo and people into Earth orbit. Aptly called a space elevator, these things might sound like science fiction, but what if I told you one is actively being developed right now? But building what could easily be one of humanity's largest ever mega projects does come with a few challenges. So what exactly is a space elevator, and how does it work? Is it possible to build, and who is crazy enough to actually take on a project this monumental? Like many things in life, our first solution can be found with a nice weekend in Paris. Flashback to 1895 and Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, the creator of the mathematical rocket equation that all of modern astronautics relies on, is visiting Paris to see the newly constructed Eiffel Tower. Keep in mind that this was before skyscrapers got their start, so this was, at the time, the largest structure made by man in history. Tsiolkovsky was inspired by its sheer height and majesty and began writing about what he called a celestial castle, an even greater, stronger tower capable of reaching the stars, the first space elevator. But Tsiolkovsky was limited by the technology of his time, and it would take another 50 years before another Russian scientist Yuri Artsitanov began outlining what modern technology could do for the concept of a space elevator and what science behind it might actually look like. Yuri's concept was all about weight and orbit. His idea centered around the linking of geosynchronous satellites to the ground with a cable. Because geostationary satellites could remain over a fixed point on the equator, Yuri theorized that the satellite could serve as a natural base from which to begin construction. By using the satellite as a base, a powerful cable could be lowered from the geostationary orbit to the surface of Earth, while a counterweight could be extended from the satellite in the opposite direction of Earth, keeping the center of mass of the cable locked in the same location. This would create tension forces no different from swinging an object in circles at a high speed, allowing the space elevator to maintain its integrity without the need for massive supporting structures. From there, the project lives up to its elevator name and can ferry payload up the length of its cable using electromagnetic magnetic vehicles. Indeed, a space elevator of some kind might be a necessary prerequisite to unlocking the full potential of the solar system. Without cheaper remedies to reach space, we may be stuck with chemical rockets, which for as incredible as they are, are notoriously inefficient. But a space elevator would be no easy feat to build. The physics and design are feasible, but the technology has yet to catch up. There is no known material with strength proven enough to survive the incredible stresses that an elevator would experience. Not just from the massive tensile forces, but the wind at varying speeds across the length of the cable. Even carbon nanotubes, the strongest material ever created and the top candidate for a space elevator cable, would not survive. But there is a bit of hope. In 2018, Japanese researchers from Shizuoka University launched an experiment to the International Space Station to demonstrate the critical aspects of space elevator capability. The experiment consisted of two CubeSats connected by a 10-meter cable along which a smaller elevator car moves using its own motor. Although small, the experiment was a success, proving that elevator technology using cables can work in space. And that brings us to our third question. Who's crazy enough to make this a reality, against all odds? That would be the same people that actually invented carbon nanotubes. I'm here in Japan, the world's fourth largest economy and one of the most technologically ambitious countries on the planet. Robotics and material science are not only a point of national pride, but parts of everyday life. It's no coincidence that Shizuoka University conducted the cable experiment in space, as Japanese engineers were the first to invent carbon nanotubes. Japan has held a long interest in material science and its applications in ambitious technology always trying to be the first place on the cutting edge. This desire for technological superiority dates back to the Meiji Restoration of 1868 when Japan began a rapid modernization campaign. And even though the Japanese economy has been relatively stagnant for the past 20 years, that momentum is still there. Tech superiority has become a part of the culture here, and as the Japanese space agency grows more ambitious in its exploration and research of space, it's almost no surprise that the most serious consideration to build a space elevator is happening right here in Japan. To give you an idea, I have a video in the works right now about Japan's upcoming moon landing and what that means for the world. At the time of this recording, Japan is only a few days away from landing on the moon, and if successful, they will be the fifth country in history to pull it off. That's pretty ambitious. 
All that ambition carries over to the Obayashi Corporation, one of Japan's largest construction companies. Obayashi has built many of Japan's tallest buildings, and they feel they're up to the task of the world's first space elevator. They've published detailed proposals on their concept for a space elevator, relying on carbon nanotubes spun across 96,000 kilometers of cable. The estimated price tag? Just 90 billion dollars. It's a lot, but somehow not as much as I first thought. And keep in mind that Obayashi isn't just some showy startup trying to impress investors. On a good year, this company makes over $15 billion in revenue. A Japanese company is working to build an elevator into space by the year 2050. Obayashi has publicly stated that they want to build a space elevator by the year 2050, hoping to start construction well before. Don't get me wrong, there are many unanswered questions with the space elevator, mainly dealing with the physical requirements of it and the exact carbon nanotube production methods that would be needed to make nearly 100,000 kilometers of cable. But to their credit, Obayashi seems committed. They even want to begin construction of the Earth port where the cable would be grounded by 2025. Whether or not the space elevator is complete by then is up for debate, but the groundwork is being laid and the proper research will take us in the right direction. And these initial steps, even if they're never implemented for a project as bold as a space elevator, will surely help us unlock new discoveries in material science, space technology, and good old-fashioned human ingenuity. Follow to stay in the loop.